Hi, my name is Caitlin Al Noguera, and I'm going to be doing the December Public Forum Topic Analysis for Champion Briefs. The Public Forum Debate Resolution for December is on federal drug policy, and it's written, Resolved, the United States should end Plan Columbia. Now, this topic is actually really important because around every December, it usually ends up being something relating to international needs, such as in uh, a few years ago when it related to amnesty for undocumented immigrants. And we noticed that the December topics seem to have this common theme. But what's really important to remember about these kind of topics, especially when it comes to federal drug policy that's not within the United States, is that you're very careful about the arguments you select and the way in which you use the words that you use in debate. Your rhetoric in this topic is going to be extremely important. Given that there's not a lot of bid tournaments that take place besides La Costa Canyon, which is in Southern California and San Diego, there's not going to be many uh, flow judges that are going to be judging these rounds. A lot of them are going to be parent judges, and you never know who you're going to be talking to. So the one thing I will say is it's really important to understand this topic, because if you don't understand the topic, then you're going to end up misrepresenting what has happened within Plan Columbia, and you may end up leading to a round that has some pretty hateful rhetoric that we don't want to see in debate. We want to make sure debate is inclusive. So first, let's understand exactly what uh, Plan Columbia is, and a, a lot of this video is just going to be dedicated to understanding exactly how Plan Columbia was implemented, what it actually did, and just generally understanding all of the different facets. Uh, the resolution is pretty straightforward. I don't recommend any definitions. I don't think it's necessary. Obviously, uh, the United States federal government is simply going to end Plan Columbia, and I think you should just prepare for a basic debate and uh, not expect anything too out of the ballpark. But first, looking at Plan Columbia. So Plan Columbia is a, both a military and diplomatic initiative, and it was aimed at combating not only drug cartels, but also insurgent groups that were in the area that were not only spiting the drug wars, but also were just generally displacing the population that lived there. So the plan was uh, developed in the late 1990s, around 1999, uh, both with the Colombian president at the time, which was uh, Andres Pastrana, and as well as U.S. President Bill Clinton. So the main thing with Plan Columbia was that the Clinton administration decided that they wanted to end the amount of cocaine that was entering the United States, and they wanted to create more stability in Colombia, since there was a relationship with Colombia that was beneficial at the time. And so that was the whole idea, was an anti-cocaine strategy. And that was like the big push for Plan Colombia, which is why a lot of times it gets filed under one of the policies that has to do with drug wars, mostly because it pretty much is part of the drug war. Like we are fighting cocaine, we are fighting coca plants. However, Plan Columbia, immediately off the bat when you research it, has a lot of critics because over the last 17 years, Plan Columbia has not only taken billions of dollars, but also hasn't necessarily had the same effects or same intentions that the original Plan Columbia did in 1999. So first, what we're going to look is at the original Plan Columbia and understand what it was supposed to be back in 1999. Because it's really important, especially as the affirmative team, that you understand that the negative is going to bring up why Plan Columbia is going to be beneficial and was created as this great anti-cocaine strategy, but really it morphed into something completely different and ended up having impacts that no one expected. So the first thing about the original Plan Columbia was that... Uh, uh, was that the Clinton administration decided that drug crops were this social problem. And they said, uh, and there was actually a quote from the Pastrana, which was the president of Columbia at the time, that drug crops are a social problem whose solution must pass through the solution to armed conflict. So what they thought was that if you limit the drug war and that if you limit the amount of cocaine that was being developed in Colombia, the armed situation would be better and you would have less people uh, going to conflict and less insurgent groups. So that was the big goal, was hoping that there would be this decrease in narcotics, this decrease in narco-terrorism. Uh, that would thus end up leading to a more stable Colombia and more sustainable economic development. This was also the hope of the Clinton administration, that we would be able to then sustain uh, Colombia's economics and we would then be able to trade with them and it would be something that would be beneficial for both parties. So this is in the sense in which it, why it was also a diplomatic mission and why it wasn't just counter-narcotics. And that was because we had a stake in Colombia. We knew that we could not only benefit the United States by having less cocaine, but also benefit Colombia by creating an economic, uh, economically stable atmosphere atmosphere that we would be able to participate in. So it became really important, first of all, uh, to guarantee that there was a decrease in the coca plants that existed. And the main problem with that was figuring out how the United States was going to have money to fund that. And 
Uh, we poured in billions upon billions of dollars. Originally, it was supposed to be $7.5 billion, and 51% of that was dedicated to social development, 32% of that was dedicated toward counter-narcotics, 16% was dedicated toward economic revitalization, and 0.8% was dedicated to guerrilla groups. Now, for the affirmative, uh, there's a few key points here. First of all, 7.5 billion is good, but over the um, over the past few years, 17 years, we've seen way more money being poured into Plan Colombia, and so it's really important to recognize that the 7.5 billion dollars isn't actually the price tag of Plan Colombia, and even the actual price tag, once you look it up and once you uh, start adding up, isn't really the price tag because the United States has poured in so many other resources in order to try and fight. So 7.5 billion dollars is a massive underestimate. So don't let the negative use that, but the other thing to notice is that they thought that limit, limiting counter narcotics would, uh, or excuse me, expanding counter narcotics would end up improving the atmosphere, improving economic stability, and fighting guerrilla groups. And then they put 0.8% toward fighting guerrilla groups. So that was another problem of just with the foundation of Plan Columbia, is that they really didn't know where they were going to spend their money, and they didn't actually allocate it the way that it was supposed to be. Um, Colombia also did try and participate, and this is something that's really important for the negative to bring up, uh, because Pastrana was uh, willing to donate uh, or to pledge $4.864 billion of Colombian resources. And this was um, part of their goal to try and like meet U.S. in the middle, because they understood that we couldn't simply be dedicating billions and billions of dollars to something. Um, the other thing that's important to notice uh, is that Plan Colombia was not just a U.S. effort. Like The U.S. was not the only country or organization that had a stake in Colombia. And a big part of uh, the world that had a stake in Colombia was the EU. And Colombia actually did uh, seek a lot of support from the EU with the intention of helping the social component because the people in Colombia were living in poverty and they were living in fear. And those are two things that don't create an atmosphere in which people can take place in trade, in which people can take place in the economics of a country when they're too scared to actually leave their homes. The problem was that not a lot of people did and not a lot of people thought it would work. So they didn't put money toward it. So the fact that they thought it could fail the fact that they weren't sure what was going to happen actually was one of the biggest problems is because it led to everyone thinking that there was this chance that if it could fail, it was essentially just wasted money. So the first part that we should look at is what the war on drugs was. And this is the biggest part that we're going to look at is why Plan Columbia falls into the war on drugs. And then we're going to analyze the social component and then we're going to analyze the guerrilla groups. And these are the three biggest components of Plan Columbia. So first of all, uh, it was seen as part of the war on drugs, which started originally in the 1970s because Congress was consistently trying to guarantee that there just were no coca plants in Colombia. Like they didn't want to just stop trade. They wanted to stop the growth of cocaine plants. And so what ended up happening was they started just using air, uh, air sprays and they would fly over the region. And in fact, 1300 kilometers of mature coca was sprayed and eradicated just in 2003, which uh, ended up preventing the production of over 500 metric tons of cocaine. So this was part of the benefits. This is what Congress thought. Okay, this is good. The war on drugs is finally working because they were taking these pesticides and they were spraying them over the coca plants. But the problem with the war on drugs was two things. The first was that farmers just relocated. Like they're not going to be like, oh no, the United States started spraying here so we can't do anything. Like they wanted to make money so they simply moved. But the second problem with that uh, is that spraying pesticides into the air to kill coca plants also uh, creates illnesses and also causes people to die. So that's another thing to point out is that this anti-drug effort isn't just an anti-drug effort. Like it ended up affecting people in such a negative manner that they really couldn't handle themselves. They didn't know what to do because it was almost like an attack on them, even though they didn't mean for it to be. So uh, this anti-narcotic activity uh, was very harmful for Colombia, and it actually created a lot of distrust because they weren't sure if the United States was really into it and if the United States was really going to help. Uh, and they weren't sure that that was actually a good plan. So... Then it comes to whether or not they were able to create the social component. Because although you could argue that the narcotics program worked, and although you could argue that the United States uh, has decreased their cocaine usage, which may have been as a result of Plan Columbia, which is something that's cited in our Champion Briefs uh, packet that was just released, we also need to look at the fact that it simply wasn't beneficial for the people because even if the narcotics program didn't just waste money, which uh, is something that's proven explicitly throughout the entire topic analysis, we do definitely need to understand what happens socially. 
And so there's a way to swing this on both sides when it comes uh, to whether or not the government actually ended up being successful. And so the first thing to understand is that Colombia has inherently had a weak government. And that's uh, simply because of the fact that there was so much violence that was happening uh, and there was so much inability to handle the situation before the billions of dollars started pouring in. So the government crew had to rely on the United States. And this is good and bad. It was bad because Plan Colombia ended up being a short-term solution. And local governments just continued to fall because uh, they there was not enough local leadership. There was not enough domestic investment within these local communities that region leaders uh, didn't have the ability to have the political impact that the United States was really hoping they would have. And the U.S. wasn't focused on these local governments. The U.S. didn't want to know how the people in these communities could be better. The U.S. wanted to end the cocaine plants that were being grown in the area. And so that was what they focused on. And that ended up being really difficult. But the biggest problem with the people and the government is that the people see the Colombian government as corrupt. They never trusted the Colombian government. Uh, in effect, according to Colombia Reports, which is uh, an article that's cited in our brief, it shows that According to an NGO, 80% of Colombians view their government as corrupt, which says a lot about the government and says a lot about the people and shows that the government really needed to use Plan Colombia to say, hey, look, we're getting billions of dollars and we're actually putting it towards something that you need and something that's important. And so that was a big issue was that not only were local governments not supported by the U.S., but then the people weren't trusting the Colombian government because they were getting all this money and all this help, but nothing was really getting better for them. And that was really problematic. And they felt like that uh, led to simply lack of faith in the government. But it was actually beneficial because Plan Colombia was not set up uh, to work on a regional level. It was originally set up to be on a national level. And the whole goal of the negative should be to get the affirmative to reach the breaking point as to why you can't remedy it, why you can't uh, amend it, why you can't change it, and why you have to get rid of it. And so there is the possibility to change Colombia now that it's supported the national government to support the regional government. So at that point, that means that this solves the problem of the local governments being unable to support their local communities and being unable to protect the people because now the United States can adapt to that. And so that's another thing that can be solved through the negative. By just scrapping the plan, you simply get rid of billions of dollars of funding and you leave both the national government and the regional governments without any funding. So the other thing is that the plan Colombia has always been about aiding the government as well. So don't let the uh, affirmative turn it into this whole counter narcotics program either, because you can find evidence that the State Department has continually been assisting the Colombian government on how to use their money wisely. And so I would pressure to find reasons why plan Colombia made the uh, national government more corrupt rather than perceived corruption, because there's a big difference there and you don't want the affirmative to get twisted in, oh, look, there's there's so much corruption when really there might just be perceived corruption, which is a lot different and which is something that can be solved a lot easier than actual corruption. So in this instance, what we're realizing is that Plan Columbia, this is not a topic that's one-sided in my opinion. Although there is a lot of evidence on the face as to why Plan Columbia is bad, there's a lot of reasons through counter-narcotics and through social development and government why, these program, why this program has been good and has been bad. So that's another thing to keep in mind is like none of these arguments and none of these uh, none of this information I'm telling you is going to be like, oh, wow, look at all these great affirmative arguments. Oh, look how it always swings negative. Like that's not going to be true because there's a lot of potential with Plan Columbia, but there's also a lot of failure. And so this topic is really going to come down to impact calculus. But before we go over impact calculus, I, um, I wanted to go over guerrilla groups and paramilitaries because I think that's an important thing that a lot of people probably aren't going to understand on this topic as well. So one of the biggest issues when it uh, came to paramilitaries is these groups that slaughtered thousands of people. They simply took control of an area. They're like guerrilla groups. They started the drug trade and then they just killed people whenever those people got in their way. They displaced millions of people and they essentially ruled the area with fear. Uh, the AUC, which is the largest paramilitary organization in the history of the country, demobilized 27,000 men and women between 2003 and 2006. And FARC was another paramilitary guerrilla group that was created and uh, essentially just ruled these areas with absolute terror. So there's two arguments here. One is that Plan Columbia enabled these paramilitary groups. And there is truth to this because uh, these groups are responsible for drug trafficking. So when the 
the United States came in trying to fight uh, with counter narcotics and trying to decrease the drug trade, what ended up happening was that the government wasn't quite sure how to deal with the paramilitary groups and ended up funneling a decent amount of money toward the FARC and other groups. This is extremely harmful uh, because obviously the Colombian government doesn't know how to handle their money. Like because of the fact that they were never taught, because of the fact that they were never aided until Plan Colombia. So they weren't sure if these guerrilla groups were actually helping because sometimes they were fighting the insurgent groups, but sometimes they were participating in the drug trade and then sometimes they were killing their people and they weren't quite sure where these guerrilla groups stood. And I know this sounds really confusing. I know it sounds like these paramilitary groups really just had like eight different purposes and they kind of did because each one of them was uniquely different. But what you can prove is that the U.S. didn't really do anything to stem their growth. But the question then is, did they do anything to cause their growth? And there's truth to them not to have causing their growth because the Colombian government is strong enough to create deals. In fact, in September of 2015, the Colombian peace deal uh, with the FARC was created because the government was strong enough to handle the situation and know what deal they needed to make to make their government better. That's really important, and it's really key to realize that there's truth to both sides. So thus it comes down to impact calculus. And on the affirmative side, it's really important to remember that impacts are mostly going to end up being lives. You need to focus on quality of life rather than just number of lives. Don't just focus on this util of 2.3 million lives. Focus on the quality of the people, um, quality of the lives of the people there. They're living in with pesticides all around them. They're living in fear. Like obviously these things are beneficial. But on the other hand, the negative side needs to focus on the potentials of Plan Colombia and that hope and that the chance of counter narcotics working is so much greater than what the affirmative is talking about because of the long term impacts. So that's Plan Colombia. It's about counter narcotics, it's about strengthening the government, and it's about fighting these guerrilla groups. And there's truth as to why Plan Colombia has or hasn't helped on all of those sides. But overall, it's important to remember that the affirmative must prove why amending Plan Colombia is too late and why it needs to be removed. And this is key. There's a lot of different arguments and there's a lot more things you can find within uh, the champion briefs that we published. And there's a lot of other facets uh, that you can argue on both sides that definitely swing more definitively one way. But this topic overall is not going to be an easy one. It's one where you really need to get in touch with the people, where you need to understand what they're going through, where you need to connect to the judge, and where you really have to explain, this is what's happening, we refuse to let this happen, and this is how we can change it. This is about real world impacts. This is about real people. Real people are living in this world, in this country, in Colombia, dealing with this situation. And that's something we need to respect. That's something we need to definitely tie into the debate. Now, if you're going to La Costa Canyon or any other small bid tournaments that exist at your local level, I wish you luck. Please focus on impact calculus and please make sure you're extending all your important impacts and weighing them at the end of the round. And if you're going to those lay tournaments, use pathos, use that impassioned rhetoric. Prove why these people do not deserve to suffer and why the Afro the Neg allows them to be saved. It is really important on this topic to understand that there's not one key way to win. It really is about how the arguments interact in the round. And I think that's the best advice that can be given on this topic. Because as long as you understand what the goal of Plan Colombia was, which was counter-narcotics and the strengthening of government through social stability, and what it turned out to be, which ended up being more counter-narcotics, which was aimed at then strengthening the government through an indirect sideline, as long as you understand that basis, you should be able to use the arguments that you research and the arguments within our briefs to see what facets work best for you. I recommend creating a narrative. I recommend finding a story, finding a way to make the judge sympathize with the people that you refer to in your speech. This is not just about numbers. It's not just about statistics. The Colombian government and the United States government have this plan ongoing. These discussions uh, can be found on the Bogota Embassy website, uh, which is a really helpful resource when you just want to look at statistics. But I also recommend reading Columbia Reports, which has a lot of the narratives that might help you create these stories within both the affirmative and the negative world. So with that, that is the 2016 video topic analysis for uh, December of the public forum topic, which is the United States should end plan Columbia. I wish you the best of luck. And I hope this advice helped and good luck researching.